Hey guys, getting uh, just the feeds going. Sorry, my camera is still crooked. Anyway, uh, we've got the Losi Rock Ray here, and let's see, we are going on both Facebook and YouTube. So today I picked up the Losi Rock Ray this thing uh we saw teasers of it i don't know how long ago but we finally got it here uh, in the shop wanted to take a look at it kind of get up close to it uh see what we can see what we can say about this thing i do have the uh the baja ray here as well even though it's in a little bit of a state of disassembly but i do have it here uh to compare as well as some other rigs to kind of you know take a take a look at it as well side by side this car uh, first of all you know for those of you that haven't seen it it is a solid axle rear ifs uh, rig focused on what you know you would assume would be the rock racing area so head to head this one would be up against the yeti like you know like most everybody could uh conclude on their own so uh got everything going all the comments are coming in on Facebook and YouTube. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. I should be able to show you as much as I can. Sorry about the noise in the other room. Those are SCX-102 shock towers coming along. So all of you will want those as much as uh, you would rather have the noise off. So let's, uh, let's get into this thing. Now, the first, I'm going to get this Facebook camera adjusted a little bit so that we can see the car better. I'll go up close on the YouTube. So what you see here is this rock. This thing is is big. These tires are the very first thing that I'd, I'd want to point out. I these tires are massive. The let's see, right. This is a standard. This is an axial BFG KR2 tire, five and a half inch tall tire. Um, when you put this thing up next to it, it it really shrinks the size of that tire you know this thing is actually I brought a tape measure just because that sounded like a good idea uh, they are just under six inches 5.75 at the very least closer to five and seven eighths tall so they're big they make the high racks look fairly small I picked up the Hyrax yesterday and mounted them up on my uh, on my bomber here. So when you put these tires next to the Hyrax, I, I say they make the Hyrax look small. I shouldn't say that. They don't make them look small, but you can tell that they're significantly bigger than the actual Hyrax. And that Hyrax, for those of you who haven't seen before, is a big tire. So. This tire is huge. The actual feel of the tire itself is is pretty good. I'm not a not disappointed. Now that's for a ready to run tire. I should specify that exactly. So for a ready to run tire, it feels pretty good. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as the body goes, I see someone saying they want to get the body for their Baja Ray. Uh, I would say that overall on this vehicle, the body is my least favorite part of it. The, the front is mean and aggressive looking, not too bad. You know, it's got this roof with this kind of fin thing on the back. Weird thing about that is it's got a ton of room between the actual cage and the, the roof back there. I mean, I can stick my fingers in between where that actually is. It's all kind of on standoffs, which is weird because you're going to get just that thing caving in a bunch. So that's odd. But beyond that the odd thing is, is it's you know, you've got this aggressive front end you know decent style of cab and then it just stops back here it just kind of quits in the back uh it's really short it looks kind of funny uh the body panels i don't know i'm disappointed with the the styling of the rear and now the rear does stop basically right at the axle line you know right where that axle meets up with the chassis uh or where the axle would line up is right where the back of the chassis stops. So it's not that big of a concern, but 
this isn't exactly something that you're just changing the body on either. You know, this isn't like a Yeti where you're just going to slap something new on top because it's, you know, like you can't just get inside of this car. You've got to disassemble this car to get underneath of it. You know, they, they want you to change the battery by using the little trap door in the back. You know, you flip this toggle switch and then that thing kind of opens up and you slide your battery in the chassis which is kind of cool and then as far as you know getting to the motor it's just like the Baja Ray you take off these three screws and this whole thing with the motor comes out and so um, it, it's 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 kind of interesting so just uh, kind of catch up on some of the comments uh, so yeah uh, you know yes there's always the kit questions or you know the the kit concerns people want kits and things like that i get it at the same time i'm i'm not <laughs> too disappointed that i was able to just go pick this thing up at rc country here in sacramento and uh throw it on the table and it's done so <laughs> i don't mind ready to runs anymore especially so uh that's the thing with this thing like i was just saying let's see what <laughs> Gee, uh Without, you can't get in this car very easily. Like we have to disassemble this thing to get inside to really get a look at this car. So that's kind of a pain, especially for doing one of these videos. Now, I do want to point out a couple of other differences. This truck has an updated rear axle from the Baja Ray. For those of you who have a Baja Ray, again, I apologize because this one's a little bit of a, in disassembly, but if you look at the Baja Ray, you see a very smooth rear axle with no uh, additional bits or a uh, <laughs> scallop. This one, you can see it's got these, these fins on it. So this rear axle, especially when you have it out of the car and you're handling it, is incredibly weak. You can feel it bending around. It's super thin. It's, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, this one, they obviously knew that there was some issues and tried to beef it up by adding some of these little thin fins around it to try and distribute that load into the axle tubes a little bit further because that break point, I believe, was happening right about where the third member bolts in from the front of this axle. And let's see. No. I was thinking that the third member had been beefed up a little bit too with the fins that are... Uh, around it, but those are actually just the same. So the third member on this is the exact same, it, including the bearing sizes. I do wish that I was down in, at the uh, U4 races as well, looking at one of the comments here. It would have been a good good time. However, uh, Dan and Michael Pham are down there racing, so that left you know, some of us up here to have to cover uh, their area. Dan ha handles our shipping along with Pham and uh, <laughs> So I actually had to go in there and do a little bit of shipping, which is not something I do, but we got it taken care of. Is this 10 scale? It is labeled as a 10 scale vehicle. Now that is a whole nother topic as far as what scale is it. Uh, for how most people classify things, it is a 10 scale car. Um, you know, what is really scale? I don't know. This is my twin hammers based car. That's a 10 scale car too. But if you put these two cars next to each other, they you know, it's, you're looking at very differently sized vehicles. So you call 10 scale, whatever you want to call 10 scale. And it's, <laughs> that it is what it is. They both use a 540, 550 size motor. Uh, I did see the metal concepts making arms. They look okay. Um, let's see, marker for a rock racer. Choose a rock ray over a Yeti. Why would you choose this over a Yeti? I don't know. I don't know if you would choose this over a Yeti yet. Uh, it's it's definitely who they're aiming at. You know, when when you're releasing a car like this, what is it? Three years after Axial released theirs to the market, you know, you would expect if you've got a three year head start and you can't do it better, you've definitely got some issues. So we'll see. I have not. I haven't driven this. Uh, you know, I have no idea if it would be better or not. It does have uh, a center differential, which is different. You know, but what that does mean is that you can one-wheel drive this car technically. 
The rear is locked, the front is open, and it's got a center open differential. Now, you can easily lock that center differential with a twin hammers locker. So, a pretty easy fix if that's what you're looking for. Let's see. Uh, do I have a build thread on my twin hammers? No. And this is not, I did not build this twin hammers. This was built by uh, Clay Grover out of Utah, I think, originally. And I actually bought it. I just replaced a bunch of the parts. I put an XR width F9 in the back and uh, changed out wheels, tires. I've got some shocks to put on it, but I did not build this car originally. It was actually a really cool build. There's a full build thread on RC Crawler about it if you wanted to actually see all the details, but that was not my original build. I can't take credit for that one at all. Um, you know, so yeah, anyway. So these guys are, call them late to the party with this. So they've got... They've had a lot of time to sit there and try and build a better car, and we'll see if that's the case, you know. Let's see. I suppose we can just tear into this thing, though, and uh, and see a little bit about what's inside. For those of you guys who weren't maybe as interested in the Baja Ray initially, maybe you haven't seen underneath of this. But if you have seen inside the Baja Ray, you're probably not going to be all that surprised. Other than some front end changes as far as the A-arms and a standard upper link, some different drive shaft styles, you're going to see a pretty similar car. The rear shock length is, let's see, the rear shock length is eye to, eye, to eye four and three quarters. So not quite a five eight or a five inch like a Yeti rear. So it's a little bit shorter in, in that respect. And the front is probably the front's like four and a quarter inches eye to eye. Maybe it's just four. I think it's a little bit longer than a standard four inch shock. So just just a hair over that. A little bit longer. Uh, you know, it's got these kind of aggressive looking shock mounts. Like someone else had pointed out in the comments, it does look like a Maverick or a Can-Am X3 uh, side by side to me as well. Just with their, what's the other one? The, uh, is it a Yamaha? No, uh, kind of looks like the Yamaha front end to me. Pretty, pretty aggressive looking front end with these crazy tall wheel arches as well. You know, just, those are all for clearance, full turn and full stuff. It's basically right into those wheel wells. Uh, the price difference. Yeah, let's see. It does still use the same battery compartment, whether you like that or not. I don't love the battery lead hanging out the back. The price difference. I I can't remember what the <laughs> what the price is. I think this one's like four fifty, um, but I I I can't remember every. <laughs> I can't remember what a Yeti costs either. So. Let's see. Let's uh, let's tear into this thing though. Oh, sorry, the live feed on the other computer just started back. The U4 races. Ah. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's. Where were we? <laughs> I I have to think that this is is not as good. <laughs> they succeed. Oh man! Now it is also a uh, you know brushless car, and out of the box, this thing is is fast on 3s. I don't know what the Gear, I don't know if they geared this thing quite a bit different than the, let's see, I need to, yeah. We're going to start by taking the body off and getting a look at there. We'll see how many screws it takes to get the whole body off first. Now again, they do not expect you, 
They do not make it convenient at all for you to get into this car. I don't love that theory. Would I recommend an IFS car for bashing it? So, I don't, would I, rec I don't know what you mean by recommend, I guess. Uh, you know, if you're looking to do what, you know, these cars are faster than like a solid axle car for sure, as far as handling and all that goes. It, they're going to be faster. That's just kind of how that goes. However, my how I bash and how you bash may be different things. What drill? This is a I don't know. This is some cheapy Amazon thing. It was in a two pack for fifty bucks or something like that. So I have two of them. So let's now if you want to. You know, if you want to race it with it, you know, in that type of class, sure. So, as we go, this thing looks more and more like a Yeti, or like, sorry, like a Baja Ray underneath. Uh, I don't know how much of the, I don't know if the interior is, it looks like the interior is the exact same as the Baja Ray. And underneath, it's looking pretty much identical to a Baja Ray. It's got a different front shock tower setup. It, the shock tower setup does look cool. I mean, it's God, all of these body mount post things that they've got. They're like these big washers that go underneath of the body on the chassis. So it's this washer setup. So it's got a washer on the inside and the outside. And, it just seems like a pain in the butt and a lot of things to lose, which I am good at. So just to take the body off, you end up with <laughs> all of those things, screws, posts, that's a pain. So I don't know how many there is there, but that's a lot. Uh, one, two, three, four, that's eight, 10, 12. There's 12 screws to get that off. Unless I missed one. No, 12. So, uh, you know, they did put a light bar on it for people that like lights, sure. Um, it looks okay. They're, they're open. There is no, like, seal on the front or anything like that. Uh, you, you can tell it's a brushed servo by... There you go. You can get the lights to come on and off. The, that's just the brush servo back feeding through the uh, receiver. <laughs> Let's see. Now, so since they have those great big flares on those uh, front scoops, you can see that they added this little sail panel in here just to help kind of keep some of the stuff out, and then they put a Maxxis sticker on it. There's two more screws that hold that on on each side. Now, again, that there's more stuff. I agree. It looks better without the body. <laughs> it's uh, it still looks a little bloated in the back to me, but I do think it looks better without that body as well. It just needs a narrow front hood section on this thing, more like a actual. I think if you put a more standard twin hammers front hood on this thing, it would look a lot better. That's uh, I would prefer that over that hood and everything. And honestly, if they did that, it may not make the back look so stubby. So they used a lot of the same parts from the Baja Ray, like these shock mounts in the back. If you actually get up close and look at them, you can tell they don't really flow into the cage. They just made them work. Um, they just kind of, you know, they just kind of terminate back there in a way that, you know, you can tell it lined up close enough, let's use it, rather than like kind of making the cage fit them a little bit more. Uh, this is this is out now. I picked this up at the local hobby shop here, uh, RC Country. So it was on their shelf 
didn't pre-order anything else like that. Just went down there and uh, grabbed it this afternoon. So let's see. You know, the, I think I almost like the back of the cage on the Baja Ray better. I think it would almost look better on this thing. And I don't even know that it would stick out all that much more. The, uh, now we've got all of that out. That means we can see inside of it. You know, you can see the motor, the center transmission and all that, but you still can't get to anything. So you would still have to disassemble it more to get to any of the actual components. One change I had mentioned in, uh, previously is those front drive shafts. Now on the Baja Ray, it's like a, a universal style axle shaft with a dog bone at the inner. This one is going to like more of a center style drive shaft from the solid axle car with the, uh, it's got universals at both ends with a plastic slider in the middle. That will probably be a little bit more reliable than that dog bone setup would have anyway. Uh, the arms are actually swept forward a little bit. So you, you can notice that there's a little bit of a, a forward sweep to these things. Um, the shocks on this car overall feel good, especially for a stock shock. It seems like Losi always does better shocks. Let's see. Ooh. I, I don't think anybody's ever thought. Now, I, I will say that the Twin Hammers maybe looks cooler. However, uh, I, I don't know that I would. Uh, I would always choose this over the Twin Hammers, in my personal opinion, even though I've never even driven this. <laughs> this is definitely some, you know, Twin Hammers was okay. And in general, the only way that I really want to own a Twin Hammers is when it's this. Still not a Twin Hammers fan at all. The, I don't know, overpriced, uh, as far as the, bat, uh, for the battery, for those of you that didn't, aren't familiar with this truck, in the back, there's this little switch, I'm trying to get it so both cameras can see it. You hit this switch over, and then this door come, eh, sorry, I'm trying to do this without actually looking at it, there you go. So open, damn it, there. And then this door comes open. That is really hard to see on camera, I understand. So see this door here. So that is how you get, and then the battery, you just slide it in there. So I've got one of my packs here. You would take that, you have to fish it up between the links, which is a pain. You gotta compress the suspension a little bit actually, and you slide it in there. Now from the side with the body panels off, you can see it fits into this fully enclosed battery, or not fully enclosed, but uh, fully encompassed battery. So, you know, it's captured on the top, on the front, uh, all sides, so that it can't go anywhere. So it is nicely uh, secured in there. And then at that point, you close that door and flip the switch to lock it, which is, uh, which is interesting. And then you end up with the pigtail for your battery connector hanging out. And it goes from here and it plugs into the bottom of the chassis. So you end up with it hanging out and it is an EC3 connector. If you run Dean's like I do, you would need an adapter or you need to change out that EC3 plug for a Dean's style plug. I've seen a lot of people do that either by just kind of putting it in there and hot gluing or 3D printing and a, something to capture it, the whole deal. Uh, are the rear train arms the same length as the Yeti? Let's here, here are some VP Yeti trailing arms. Um, eye to eye, these trailing arms are about a half of an inch longer, the, uh, the, the new ones here on the Baja Ray. So about a half of an inch longer, and then the mounting points are all significantly different. The mounting points on the Rock Ray are moved significantly further forward, so they're more towards the chassis side than they are towards the axle side, where that would be uh, conversely true with the Yeti trailing arms. 
could you accommodate a spare tire on rear during full shock compression? Let's see. So here's a tire, granted not the same size as this. If you compress it down all the way, uh, I mean, you could fit it back there and the tire would probably touch the rear upper links just a hair during full compression, depending on how you mount it. But you would also need a some sort of mount back here to actually, you know, hold this thing. So that would be your only uh, your only task to actually get that done. It's kind of, it's cut out in the back of the cage here to clear that rear axle coming up. Kind of looks like a toothless old dude as this thing kind of comes up. And anyway, I don't know why that analogy was the thought, but so as far as size and everything goes, let's see if I can move this thing back a hair. So let's see. There's that. So uh, cost, I think, is like four fifty ish. I don't, I don't hundred percent remember. That <laughs> you'd have to check. I got that. This was for the shop, so it wasn't. Uh, you know, it didn't come out of my personal pocket, so that's why I can't remember. Uh, tire compound feels good for a ready to run. Uh, better than most on the, as far as the ready to run side goes, but not something that I uh, I don't know how they'll perform exactly. It it might be like the low C blue compound, which has always been a pretty good compound in the past. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to catch up with some of the comments. Uh, fix my. So the. Uh, Trying to think, you know, we I could take off this whole cage, but that seems like it's going to be a ton of work. <laughs> I don't really know that I want to do that. <laughs> um, open front diff, yes, that is the case. Open front diff, open center diff, locked rear diff. So you can technically get one wheel motion with this thing. You mean you wouldn't buy those tires? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to run them, honestly, to see if they'd be something I would buy aftermarket. They're glued on to these tires. You know, these are a typical uh, glue-on style. So that's uh, that's that. Let's see. And what I could do is take off. I'm gonna take off one of these these front wheels. Let's see. All right. So, for those of you who I haven't seen before, these things do have a brake rotor and caliper setup. I am not a fan of, uh, you know, the brake rotors like this. It's just something for a rock to get caught on, get caught between your wheel and that caliper and just cause things to hang up. Not a fan personally. Um, steering angle, I will say that for an IFS truck, the steering angle on this car is not bad. That's uh, I will say that that's a pretty good improvement. To get that much steering angle out of an IFS, um, is, is not, I, I'll say that that seems to be pretty good. And let me, ooh. So, the, uh, the beadlocks are a race line monster style, deep dish. I mean, if they weren't, they, they look decent, but they're a plastic regular tire or wheel, I should say. Um, let's see, do I have, I'm going to mount up, see if I can mount up. I'm going to take one of the wheels off my bomber and mount them up. I think I have a 
475 hub on my bomber. And we'll see if a, what a standard two point, this is one of, this is actually the, uh, our KMC Bully 127 beadlock wheel. Uh, this is the 1.2 inch wide version. So they're, the, they're much deeper than like the old 0.8s. Um, and we're going to see if this will mount up again with that 475 hub. I, I would assume that a lot of you guys who are as heavy into this as, as some of us uh, are going to do is change the, uh, change the wheels and tires pretty quickly because that seems like what we always do. Now, what I don't have in, yes, I do. For a VP style wheel with an SLW hub, you do need a slim eight millimeter driver to be able to put the wheel, actually, these wheel nuts might be too fat. They are too fat. So you will need a flangeless five millimeter nut to actually switch wheels. Um, so I happen to have that here because in the front of my bomber, I've got our VXD universal axles, which have a five millimeter stub. So if you want to change wheels to a stand, you know, SLW is kind of the standard. You'll need to go from a flanged five millimeter uh, nut to a flangeless five millimeter nut. So now let's mount that. Again, this is the same wheel, 475 hub, 1.2 inch wide version on the KMC Bully 127. So there we go. Um, the good news is that there's, uh, there's tons of clearance on the back side with a 475 hub. You could go to a much smaller hub and still clear. I, I dare to say that you could almost clear these wheels with a 225. Um, I, I would want to confirm that before I stood by that answer, but um, that, uh, that setup clears just fine. I don't know how that width difference changed. Let's, uh, let's measure quick. So right now my track width on this car as it sits with that hub is as close as makes no difference, 13 inches. If I take that back off, when I say five millimeter, I mean the actual thread, not the outside diameter. This is an eight millimeter wrench, but that, this is a five millimeter nut. That's how that, you, you say the thread size, you don't say the size that it takes to actually, the wrench that it takes to put it on. Um, so I'm going to put the stock tire back on if I can find what I did with it. Over here, there it is. So, stock tire back on, and we're almost exactly the same track width still. So, basically, a 475 hub on a VP wheel gets you stock track width on this car with a Hyrax tire, which is a big fat tire, which so are these. So there's that uh, info for you. So let's, I'm going to put their wheel back on. So if you were a fan of the old Maxxis creepy crawlers, um, they just call these, uh, yeah, no, they still do call them. They're, they're the old creepy crawler LTs. So for those of you who used to uh, pay attention to a lot of rock crawling and things like that, the creepies were the probably the most popular tire that they Maxxis used to have in competition before the traps pretty much took that over.
So um, I don't see a KV rating on the motor inside there. Let's see. Is the, is the light, is there a light in the LED bar? Yes, there is a light. Um, and you can tell. There you go. The servo back feeds, you can play it. You can uh, show a little light come out of this thing. Let's see, sorry, uh, coming back to some of the comments. Um, so, yep, I think I answered most of those. Um, you know, the brushless system in there is a, a sensorless dynamite system. 120 or 130 amp ESC, I think it was. 130 amp ESC, so plenty of uh, plenty of headroom as far as power goes on that system. Uh, the I think it was like a it was a fast motor in the uh, here we go I can see it on this side. Tw this is a 2800 kV system in this. Um, do I like it? And the shocks look cheap. Um, I think that the shocks now they feel decent. They are a plastic body with a, you know, aluminum portion of the cap, plastic upper part, um, you know, when we're looking at what shocks we get with ready to runs, I would say that this, uh, these shocks actually are pretty decent. I, I'm not, I'm not mad at these shocks at all. They feel pretty good. They still have oil in them and they don't appear to have oil all over the bottom of them at this point. So, uh, I'll call that a win. The, this car, while I did mention earlier that they did help fix the rear uh, axle by adding some upgrades to the, uh, to it with some, some scallops or fins or whatever you want to call that, they still have those uh, flexible, flimsy, uh, cheap upper links. Now, I've got some links for that already available as incision links, so you can get stainless replacement links for those for like 13 bucks on the Vanquish site now. The other, you know, there's some other things I think on this car that'll probably need some work. These front, it's got plastic front upper links and uh, and steering tie rods. Those, you know, may need replaced. I think the other thing is is that the steering rack on this car looks a little on the flimsy side, and they uh, that will probably need a little bit of work as well, all the way back to the servo. Um, yeah, let's, gussets, yes, gussets was the word I was looking for a second ago, <laughs> um, is it a, is it a quality ride, is it quality, I will say at this point there is parts about this car that I think have some nice quality design features and quality construction and there's some parts that I think that whoever was designing it did not understand the stresses that these cars are going to go through or maybe they did and they just had a budget that they had to hit I don't know uh, weight comparison to a Yeti I have no idea I do not have a Yeti here that doesn't have every piece of vanquish on it so you're out of luck on that one everything I have here is VP'd out um, it, I mean, I don't know. It this thing with the aluminum pan on it, it's a nice, you know, it's like a four mil thick aluminum base plate. That's that's heavy, you know, that's some weight. Now it's in a good spot down low, having a nice aluminum chassis pan. I like that. I, I you know, I think that that was a good fit. Um, what size lipo can the compartment fit? Ooh, uh. Is it sort of small? Uh, actually, I think it looks good size. I don't. I think you'll be able to fit most battery packs in there. I, for sure, anything hard, you know, hard case, uh, standard hard case. Maybe not big fat 3s hard cases, but um, that's you know, it, that's that's to be said. So I think that there are some areas on this that are going to need a little bit of work. I do think that. The front end on this car looks pretty good. Uh, you know, as mentioned before, it's got, for an IFS car, caveating that, it's got pretty good steering. So, 
Uh, I'll give it that part. The rear axle has some, you know, some cool styling points. It's just got its downfalls. I would yet to see if the gear set in this vehicle will hold up to the abuse that we put cars on. I don't know that other cars understand, or other cars, other companies understand how much stress we put cars through in the, you know, in the rocks and with like U4 type RC racing. So I, it's yet to be seen. We'll see how this thing holds up, you know. Michael Pham, one of our guys, he picked one up at Horizon on Thursday morning. And he is at U4RC Nationals right now. And he's, I know he raced it in the heats already. And I know he took top qualifier in the heat that he was in. Um, I Shorter training arms and shorter wheel bit. I think that would make this thing look even more goofy. The, the rear is already too short. You can't take away the proportions of the front. There's a lot of car here, and there's no car here. So shortening that up even more would look like when those guys cut the car, cut a front wheel drive car off at the you know B pillar and drive it around with the rear wheels dragging. <laughs> um, but you know, I I think that this needs more cage in the back, not less wheelbase. You know, I just. I feel like this line here should have just kept going a little bit and we should have had we should have had chassis out to here rather than all the way up here. Of course these are all it's a, it's all opinion. This I didn't ever mention the wheelbase on this car which is at Man, it looks like this car is like 15 and a quarter inch wheelbase. Um if, unless yeah, I mean, I guess it de depends on how, you see how much wiggle this tape measure has at this end? Like, this thing has a quarter inch of play, not not the best tape measure. See that? <laughs> so, it's probably right at 15 inch wheelbase. So, take all of the dimensions that I gave you with that tape measure with a grain of salt. <laughs> Um, uh, no, the cage does not flip up at all. It's bolted on to all get out. The Yeti is a nice, you know, two body pins, the whole thing folds forward. This it couldn't be further from that. This is more like the actual EXO. <laughs> um, no, this was purchased. Uh, now, I wouldn't shy anybody away from buying one of these. This thing... I personally think this thing looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Again, they're Losi's late to this party, you know. Axial's been been uh, the king of this area for like three years, you know. So Losi had three years to, if you know, if you can't come up with something better in three years, oof. But I think that uh, I do think that this car is going to be fun. It's gonna it's gonna push some things. I just think that there's, we all know, we've all owned the popular cars and we all know when you put a bunch of power into them, sometimes they don't, they don't, uh, <laughs> they, they don't hold up. So this one is out of the box, comes with a good amount of power. It's, we'll see. I don't know. We never know. Now we don't know until we run the piss out of them. Um, is it possible to put the rear Baja cage on it? Um, I don't know. So, the cages on these two cars are are different everywhere. They're different in the front for sure. This one is much narrower. This one is much wider. Um, I've got two cameras here and it's hard to show everything in both of them. Um, so, we're, we're narrow on this one versus wide here. The cockpit area is the same. So we've got that. And then from there back, things start changing. But the problem is, is that you can't just like take the rear because it's it's one piece, a lot of this. But I don't know. I you'd you'd sure have a lot of work ahead of you to try and run part of one and part of the other.
I'm not saying it's impossible. It might be a super easy bolt up type thing. I don't know yet. Haven't tried it. Probably not going to try it personally. Um, probably just going to, you know, we'll try it out just like it is and, and go from there. It, uh, It does have a sway bar in the stock factory. That's nice. There's no sway bar in the front. It, let's see, does it have, I don't see any provisions in the stock for, or in the stock, in front for a sway bar. I could just be missing it though, not sure. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that the, the Baja Ray was an awesome car, you know, how they, how they did that thing. It looks like the Baja Ray was designed to be the Baja Ray. Um, you know, and it, it's got a lot of cool features. I like how that body goes on with the multiple pieces. This one now I'm getting picky and I don't like it, but that's just me. Uh, the, the Yeti, I like the Yeti, like Andy had just said, likes the Yeti better than the Yeti score, likes the Baja Ray better than the Rock Ray. With, you know, so opposite of the two. And I, I kind of see his reasoning, you know. The Yeti looks like it was designed to be the Yeti and they made it the score. This one kind of looks like, you know, it was the Baja Ray and they made it into the Rock Ray. I don't know which one is true. It's hard to say. Um, sure, some vendors are going to love for custom cages. That, I think, is 100% true. This thing has just a super, you know, you got a rigid, flat bottom to work with, and you build whatever cage off the top of it you want, that's gonna be awesome. This thing is gonna be a sweet little uh, setup to build custom cages on. You know, I, if I was gonna do it, I would maybe even look at trimming up this thing, you know, shortening it a little bit, maybe coming from the rear and coming in. That, if I was, uh, you know, gonna get a little bit pickier with it. But I do think that this thing is, has the potential for some really cool custom cages. Um, am I going to do any running video on this? I will do. I will shoot video of this probably up at Auburn uh, APR, Auburn Performance Raceways track, in a couple of weeks. There will be a bunch of them there at the time, so I'll get a chance to shoot a bunch of video with these running U4. This one, I'm not going to be running because this is my test dummy for parts and all that kind of thing. What's up, Jonathan? <laughs> Three millimeter aluminum chassis, not four millimeter. I said four millimeter earlier, so I was wrong there. Um, let's see. That is, we're getting through most of the comments. If there's any other specific questions on this that you have, let me know before we uh, turn this thing off. Overall, I think it's going to be a cool car. I think that with the uh, the amount of time that they waited to release something, it better be a really good car. The center differential is easy to lock out. I think that that it, as far as to race this car in U4, you actually have to lock out that center differential current. So, what's up, Brett? Um, you know, to, to make this car legal in U4, that would be a requirement. Not everybody cares about U4RC or U4RC rules, whatever. So, the to lock the center differential on this, you just buy the low C, or the low C, the whatever you call this thing. Viterra Twin Hammers Locker. Uh, yes, Radio Gear is the cheapy all-black spectrum dx2e radio this thing also has the well, the avc active vehicle control so uh it's you know it's got whatever it's basically a gyro that's all it is let's see so the uh they call it you know they call that thing a dx2e however it's clearly a three channel radio because yeah, well, I could be, I'm pretty sure I'm correct, though. Because you can, con I thought you can control, yeah. You can control the AVC with this knob up there. So, that's a separate thing. Now, granted, you can't do something else with it because it's built into the receiver. But, whatever. <laughs> AVC causes terrible diseases. 
I love it. <laughs> and I don't disagree. I know a lot of people do not like ABC. I don't know because I don't run anything Spectrum. I think Spectrum is actually what causes the diseases. People just don't know it yet. Uh, Futaba will cure all of your issues, though. So just in case any of you needed, uh, the Futaba 4PV is what... Granted, Futaba 4PV sounds more like an STD than anything. <laughs> granted, it's the best radio. I like my 4PV even better than my 4PX. I, You know what? I... Like Andy was saying, this car without the body on it looks awesome. I really like the uh, I really like the way that this front end looks without the body on it. It just needs a standard flat hood. Just need to take this thing, take that Can Am looking body off of it, and throw a uh, flat aluminum hood on it and hit the rocks. Uh, rear shock mount positions. There is provisions for dual rear shocks. I'll show you that. Let's see. Okay. So, rear shocks. Uh, let me try and get something to point at. So, uh, rear shock positions currently is in this spot here. And then the second rear shock position is right behind it plenty of room to go back to the more rearward mounting uh, hole on the trailing arm uh, back here just out of view so let's see if we have anything else that pops up is it a kit version or ready to run? Uh, this is a ready to run only so as far as I know, I don't know when, I don't know what vehicles Losi offers as a kit that aren't Team Losi. And I don't know, does Team Losi only do rollers? So, yeah. I turned it into a kit by just taking stuff apart and spreading it around my table. Uh, where is the servo? Oh, good question. So, the servo sits just behind this this splash guard on the passenger side. It sits vertically. Yeah, let's see. Let me, I was gonna grab my phone and shine a light on it, but my phone is Facebook. So uh, that's gonna be hard to do. It's right here, standing up on end, right in that spot. Uh, is it possible to level it so it doesn't have that forward stance? Um, this thing currently has no preload in the rear. It's got a ton of room to add preload to the front, you know, to kind of, to, you know, lift that up. Uh, it actually sits about full extension. I think that the, that forward stance is more just the styling of the cage because the belly's... The belly's kind of flat on it. Stick your finger in the cockpit. <laughs> uh, yes, this is a Fuse brushless motor, 2800 kV. Uh, let's see. Let's see, rear fan. Uh, no, the rear fans are just a... Uh, plastic radiator looking cover nothing nothing functional there is not even a you know molded fan blade it's just a shroud what's the button in the back uh that this button back here is the on off switch for the esc as well as the programming button for the fuse style or dynamite whatever they call these things brushless systems <laughs> Stop showing us the back. <laughs> Still have to eat. <laughs> the back is is not appealing, but I don't know that it'll loot make you lose your appetite. Uh, so yes, there is. This is the opposite of a quick release 
as far as the cage goes. It will take you a lot of screws to get the cage off. Is it considered waterproof? Good question. Um, what did I do with... I would have to look at the box. Um, let's see. It shows it in the water. <laughs> um, does it show waterproof? Where does it say? Um, waterproof electronics. There you go. Yes, it is. Yes, it is the, as far as getting into this thing, it is the same nightmare as the EXO or the Twin Hammers. Now, granted, the uh, hardware quality on this car does seem better than the Twin Hammers. The Twin, ha the twin Hammers uses like a uh, molded butter to form all of their screws so that as soon as you touch them, they're completely worthless. Let's see. What scale is this? They call it a tenth scale. Let's see. Um, how is it compared to the Twin Hammers? I don't know. Um, you know, as far as like how does it perform and how, you know, this one, I had to uh, rob the axle off of this one. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of times you need to get inside of a vehicle and it should not be as big of a pain as it is especially when you have terrible two speeds built into cars like this and weak steering racks and this suspension that you literally have to tear that into that to adjust suspension so there's all kinds of reasons especially with a car as bad as this one <laughs> um, you know it's, I just did not, I had more problems with this car that just did not, could not get over how much I just liked working on this car. I had talked, uh, I talked with Viterra for quite a while after this car came out. And, uh, you know, that's, then they had me try the Ascender and that was, you know, they're like, we know you didn't like the, the, twin hammers, but you should try the Ascender. So I tried the Ascender and that wasn't nearly as bad. <laughs> it still wasn't my favorite car, of course, but the Ascender is not nearly as bad as this. But, so I don't know, you know, I just didn't like, this car was too small for me. It didn't, driving it, it didn't feel like it had any soul behind it. It just felt like it was there. I don't know. But yeah, if you break a drive shaft or, you know, anything like that, there's just, now this one, what they want to do is, you know, to get in, you don't really have gear mesh to adjust. It just comes out and I don't know. I like it. It's way different than what I'm used to. So it's just different. It, so, you know. Difference is different is always different, so I just gotta get used to it. I'm excited for it though. I'm excited that bolting on, a, you know, one of the methods with the 1.2 inch wide still fits well. What I didn't mention, let's see. Let I going to look. Okay, it's the same knuckles on both cars. So, no, yeah, no, no, it is a different, that is a, di they're different knuckles. Let's take the wheel back off and see. So, yes, quite a bit of difference, which I should have taken the other one off so that I could see them closer together. <laughs> um, but this is never going to work, but actually the YouTube camera is getting a pretty good look. Um, they're just different. 
there's a bunch of little differences between them. Uh, and overall, I think the one on the rock ray is shorter, which probably uh, was, they did that so that they could fit a standard 2.2 wheel on it. Which was a good idea because if they would have put anything else other than a standard 2.2 on this car. That would have been a bad idea. <laughs> Complicated like my wife. <laughs> so, uh, how fast? Uh, fast. It's pretty fast. There you go. Let's see. Uh, reminds me of a mix between an exo and assembly and body. Yes. Uh, what's the parts availability? Uh, I would imagine parts availability would be pretty good. Um, I, you know, low seat, as far as aftermarket, it's a whole new platform. It's going to take some time for everybody to catch up. It's a good thing that the power cords are magnetic on MacBooks, because that would have been bad. Will VP be making upgrades? Yes. There will be some VP upgrades for this car that will work on both cars. So, just all has to fall into the the queue of new parts. <laughs> Whatever car it is, how does it compare next to the Traxxas X Max? <laughs> it was because I didn't know that I was going to get this today. I just got a phone call said it was up. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have stopped for Smart Water. This is the last one of these I had in the refrigerator. My throat was closing up. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I, you know, that's the the comment Raymond had made. Guessing more people will buy it, knowing that there's a chance of aftermarket parts coming out. It's it's kind. Of, I don't know. I always find that like a chicken or the egg thing you know do do people buy car parts do people buy cars thinking you know because there's going to be aftermarket parts or you know are aftermarket parts available because people buy a bunch of cars it's you know i don't know what to say about that you know it's it's one of those things sure uh, i there will be parts available for this i'm sure that it's a straight axle car it, that makes it exciting. There's a lot of things that can be done there. And uh, I'm excited for this car. No matter how much I, I don't like this rear chassis portion, this would be a cool candidate for a cool aftermarket chassis. So, or cage on top of it at least. Yeah, this view of that car, like Andy's saying, <laughs> is a great view of this car. Yeah, that's the... Facebook view. This is the good for the YouTube one. Just when it hides the the look of this going on. Let's see. <laughs> so the uh, let's see. Anything else we can talk about before uh, we call this thing done for the uh, for the evening? Uh, yeah. N no good. Good. But. I, I do like I do like this portion at least. The the part that is going yet to be seen or proven is will the gears in these axles hold up to big 2.2 tires, especially when they put huge 2.2 tires on this thing stock. Um, will different bodies fit? Uh, I don't know. It depends. I don't know. I think that we'll probably have to see, wait and see for actual bodies to fit because this is not a standard body and it's not a, 
you know, I don't know. It just looks quite a bit different. So I think that we'll have to wait for specific aftermarket bodies to be made for this thing before we uh, start saying that. Sure, you can put any Lexan body on top of it, but it, it's that's yet to be seen. Is it four-wheel drive? Sure, it is four-wheel drive. Granted, it has a center differential and an open front, so you can still do one-wheel drive. Uh, the rear is locked, so they always spin together, but it does have a center dip. <laughs> it does look like a UTV body. <laughs> Let's see. Are the ga gears cast or machined? Uh, they are machined, it appears. I'm pretty sh pretty confident in that. I've got the other ones in the other room from my Baja Ray, um, but they are machined gear. They've, it's actually, the, the gears are small, and not necessarily in diameter, but in the tooth contact area. They're, they're pretty small. The gear ratio on it's like a 373 to 1, something like that. It's like a 42 or 4313. How fast does it go? I don't know. It just goes. <laughs> you know, I don't... I never really care about what a top speed is listed as. That does, it doesn't really make any. It is what it is. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Fuck. Now, the one thing I'll say about this car without the <laughs> body panels. Now, you know, like, say you take the body actual off of a Yeti. You know, you can bolt on uh, like some aluminum pan. Granted, the bolt to the inside, which I always thought that looked dumb. But this one, you see these standoffs? So on YouTube, you can see them down here. On Facebook, you can see them up here better. Uh, but they're just, you know, see, those things are sticking out from the chassis like a half inch or three quarters of an inch. And those are molded into that chassis. So if you wanted to run this thing without these body panels, you have to cut these things off. In general, I think these are going to become. You're going to you're going to see some hangups with their. You know you're going to catch those things or rip them off. Um, what does it compare to the size of the Wraith? Uh, smaller or sorry, big. This would be bigger than a Wraith. Um, I took the tires off my bomber. Otherwise, let me put them back on and then I'll show you the size of that. So I think the this thing is probably. A half inch longer in wheelbase than a bomber. Let's see. What did I do with my other wheel nut? Oh, there it is. So. Do I like it as much as a Yeti? It's a hard, it's impossible to say at this point. I've never, I've owned this car or for, you know, had this car here for a couple of hours. And basically I didn't even look at it until I started this live video. So you, you have as much experience with this car now as I do, other than it's in my hands. So, um, you know, sitting them side by side, they don't look that terribly different. Track width wise, you'll start to see. So we're even on this side, but that is where you'll see the difference is on that side. So you've got a decent amount of difference in that respect. Basically, these cars are the exact same length overall, but that's if you count the uh, spare tire overhang with the bomber. <laughs> Longer wheelbase, wider track width, overall a little bit larger than a bomber. The bomber is, that that car, that bomber is my favorite RC. Uh, you know, all in all, solid axle cars are my preference overall. I, you can't replace a solid axle car for me. That bomber is the car that I want, you know, <laughs> solid axle front and rear, trailing arm rear, uh, Cool styling with the cage. That's what I like. So, you know, everything else I'm comparing to that. 
IFS, okay, I get the, I totally get the benefits of an IFS car. It's just a personal preference that I would rather have a solid axle. This car is going to be faster. No matter what, it's going to be faster because I can't drive fast. I'm just not that good at it. <laughs> you know, the guys that are good at driving faster down in Arizona right now are running U4. So that's, uh, that's not me. Uh, have I tried the bomber converted to an IFS yet? No, I've got a conversion for one here. Just never installed it. Uh, solid axle is my, just the way that I like it. If I build a second one, I might try it. I might actually look at doing that here anyway. Uh, tires feel pretty good. Foams actually feel really good for a stock car as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, I think that they did a good job with this car. At this point now, we just have to see if it actually holds up that's going to be the that's the that's what we have to actually see at this point will the gears hold up uh you know to race it the guys who are going to race it in u4 are simply going to lock that center diff and at that point it becomes legal and at that point it's head to head with the other 2.2 ifs cars so we're gonna see because they're down there i think there's two of these cars that are racing at u4 nationals either as we speak or within the next couple of hours and we're going to see how stock cars handle uh the competition down there of fully built and upgraded ready to race uh ready to race yetis and casters and whatever else someone has hobbled together any more news on traxxas uh, I know that's off topic as well, but I will acknowledge that question because there was more news on the new Traxxas. Um, the new Traxxas car, they had, uh, I read today, the guy who owns U Ultimate RC used to be one of the, like, the bigger face or one of the bigger YouTube channels. Whoops, my bad. Sorry. So, uh, the guy who owns Ultimate RC, he uh, posted up that he talked to the guys at Traxxas recently, and they got some more info. They said that uh, that new Traxxas is SCX-10-2 sized, a 1.9 with adjustable wheelbase. Uh, it is said to be using the Summit diff locks. So... I don't know if that means it's using the Summit diff gears, because the gear size actually looks a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm not sure what the, uh, what the status with that is, but, uh, it is the more common size. It just looks big, they say. So I don't know. It's, uh, that's the news that I know at this point. Be interesting to see when it comes out. Uh, the other thing, the release is May, first week of May is what I'm hearing is when we're actually going to see the release of that new Traxxas car. And we're actually supposed to start seeing some leaked, uh, leaked. They're gonna start slowly giving us some information on that car starting soon from what I'm told. Uh, where can you watch the U4 races? Uh, LiveRC.com is the one live broadcasting right now. Um, the 2.2 Indy. So the class that this would race in is are they, they're racing right now. It is the, they're in the heats. So the mains have not started yet, uh, but the, they're gonna start here in not too long. So it'll be pretty, even though it looks like they're running comp to me, I don't know. We'll see, one or the other, they're racing right now. LiveRC.com is where you'll be able to find uh, the live broadcast on that. The live broadcast has been super sketchy all day, in and out. Hopefully they've got that fixed. I've got it playing on the computer over there in the corner without any uh, volume, but that's the status on it anyway. So hopefully that gave you guys enough info on this card to let you uh, let you see see if you want to make a decision on that. We will see more on this thing. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'll do specifically. It, we do have uh, parts coming for it, so I'm sure I'll show those off. But beyond that. That's probably uh, what we're what we're gonna show. Uh, do I ever go to Axial Fest? Yes, I was at Axial Fest this year. I'll be at it this coming year as well. So, if you guys are there, because I'm only 45 minutes away from Axial Fest, so I'll be there. Uh, yep, Noel posted the link to the U4 races.
Uh, thanks for watching, guys. That's all I got. I think that'll finish this thing up pretty good. Fun car. Go buy one. You'll have fun, too. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you on the next one.